But we're happy to have you. Very happy to have you. Awesome to, to be here. You, as you know, as you know, uh, LAUSD went back to school yesterday, so uh, we're hoping that uh, we're going to get the same turnout of kids. But if not, we will uh, put this on our YouTube uh, feed, our YouTube channel, and uh, let the kids look at it later. Awesome. So we're not we're not sure what the what the attendance is going to look like as of yet. We just did one of these with the uh, bunch of the TMZ people. Did one with the LA Unified as a mentoring program, and we're going to do some more. Oh wow! It was really cool. Wow. Like Harvey was there, wow. and a bunch of executives and a bunch of random people from TMZ, and they were all asking questions. Good experience. Was it really? Yeah, it was yeah. really good to work with the kids. I could imagine. This is uh, Ezwar's little brother right there. What? I forget your name. Tell me your name. What's your name again? Joseph. Joseph, that's right. I'm sorry, I forgot. Where's your brother at? Um, his dad. He's with his dad? Yeah. Okay. What's, what's your dad doing? He's, he's almost gonna go to work. Uh, tell him I said hi. Okay. <laughs> his, his, his dad is a chef, guys. He, uh, he makes one of my favorite meals. <laughs> one of my favorite meals here in Hollywood. Tacos? What is it? No, it's a, it's a breakfast burrito. He makes an awesome breakfast burrito for me. Mm. Hi, Clipper fan. Clippers. in the place to save the day while everyone else <laughs> puts their back in their seat buckle in with their child safety devices and everything we'll get back started so everybody who's there uh do us a favor and just say hello real quick so we can see how y'all connections are and we can um get forward with our great pal chat with mr broad here alexandra Hi. all right Alcaraz is back. Jeff, you back? I am. Can you hear me oh. now? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Take this job. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you uh, didn't dissuade our, uh, our, our guests from being on here by uh, <laughs> babbling <laughs> some nonsense like you normally do. You're horrible. <laughs> 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 There's no way I wouldn't do this at least once. There's no way. <laughs> so, so brother Dennis, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, and again, uh, kids might pop on later, and if not, uh, they'll be able to look at it. Uh, uh, so we start off all of our our our, our chats the same way. Uh, we have our guests do one minute, one second. That's where you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, and. Uh, and uh, where you're at now. Okay, so, the, well, so the floor is yours. The guys, my name is Dennis again. Broad. I, uh, I got involved with the police department when I was 14. I actually started a little earlier with the D.A.R.E. program. When the D.A.R.E. program first came out, I met an officer, and he talked about the Explorer program, which is now the Cadet program. So when I was 14, I really could have gone either way in life. I kind of had long hair. School didn't matter as much. And I, I loved Adam 12. I cut my hair, I joined the, the Explorer program, and it was an awesome program, and I was there a little past about maybe 23 as an advisor. I, uh, I've done jobs in my life. I've done uh, arresting shoplifters. I've been a private investigator, and now I'm a TV news producer and manager on an assignment desk for TMZ. That's kind of the short of it. <laughs> you know, and one of my jobs is I call law enforcement all day, starting at 2.30 in the morning, till about four or five in the, uh, in the afternoon and dealing with breaking stories, mainly with law enforcement, but I can work on any story that there is. How am I doing that, on time? That's, 
That's actually how me and you met. I think it was maybe eight was, years ago now. Was it Northeast, I think I was calling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was on uh, I was on the desk for a little while and you were you were calling every day religiously asking, uh, is anything going on? Anything hot any hot topics that uh, we need to discuss? And I thought, man, this guy's gotta be crazy. Why is he calling every single night? But you were religiously and faithfully calling, and I really appreciated that about you. And the coolest thing is you were always so nice and so genuine on the phone. So so well, so I mean, thank you I, for being one of the things I believe is, you know, as, as a person, my word is my bond. You know, that's how these people know me. If I lie one time, no one talks to me. If I'm dishonest or I do something bad, they don't, they don't talk to me. And you can have a bad story. There's been plenty of bad stories in the police. But if you're fair about it and you call and you say, hey, I need to speak to someone. I need to get a comment. At least needs to be fair. You'll get a lot farther. They might not like the story, but at least you give them a chance, you know? And anyways, I prefer to do the good stories. You know, cops arrest bad guy, game over. Those are the stories I like. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's let's jump into it. Let's delve into your background. Let's go back to your childhood. Where where did you grow up? Where I grew you said up in the you... valley, Reseda. I actually grew up in Van Nuys. I started as a police explorer in Van Nuys, and then my parents moved literally three blocks from West Valley, but I still stuck in Van Nuys because that was my station. You know, and it's uh, I got to go back there. I don't know, about a year and a half ago and I spoke to the cadets in person and it was just uh, shocking how much that station has changed. And there were still a few of the old timers that were there, which was kind of cool. Yeah, I, I feel bad for people that grew up in the valley. Our, our own officer Lee grew up in the valley or, or came and moved to the valley. And, you know, it just seems like it, it'd be real hot in the summertime and uh, maybe miserable when it gets to be humid on days like today. Oh. I live in Santa Clarita now, and it's 111 outside. So it's oh, hot. my gosh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. OK, so uh, junior, junior high school, uh, let's start there, or elementary junior high school. Did you have any idea what, did you have any idea what you wanted to do? Did you know that you were going to go into TV? I know you said that no, you were a little bit I, of a bad kid. I, fell into TV on complete accident. I wanted to go into law enforcement. I mean, as a police explorer, and that kind of I mean, once I got to be in there and I got to see law enforcement from a different side where I didn't have to be arrested to hang out with you guys, it was awesome, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I, I geared my life towards that. And, you know, and then, like I said, I turned my grades around and, and I learned and I work with these officers. And you youngsters that are there with these officers, you have such an amazing, amazing opportunity. Because these guys, especially young right now, being with the cops is not always the positive thing so commend you guys for doing this because this will change your life i mean i i have learned lessons from officers 30 years ago that still are relevant to me and that i i use today and i just one of the one of the greatest lessons that i learned and my my explorer advisor and forgive me officers was a dinosaur at the time you know he had 25 years on when he was my advisor and and he said listen i go wow man you've gotten fights and stuff like that and that's cool and he said no that's not cool if you fight every day, you won't be around for 20 years. Use your head. And he taught me about thinking. You know, that's one of those lessons that I just like, oh, wait a minute. That is so right. You know? And uh, that's kind of just like, I said, it just sticks in me. And I'm like, wait, I don't have to be the tough guy all the time. Use my words. And there's a time, you know, if you have to be a great, yeah, there is that time. But smart officers, they can talk, they can de-escalate a situation. And that works in life everywhere. Absolutely, absolutely. Because the officer Lear, we're still trying to in, drain that into his head, you know. But we're gonna get there. You're gonna be the one to help us. I I thought you were gonna jump on the fact that he said uh, his old uh, training officer was a yeah. dinosaur. I thought you were gonna jump on that and talk about me in that regard. So I'm glad I'm glad you went the other way. <laughs> and I, mean that, I mean that term with respect. Don't tell him so, Jeff. <laughs> Uh, Brother Joseph, Joseph, did you hear what he said? You can learn some good things from officers. Did you hear that? Yes. All right. I'm going to hold you to that. You heard it. I got witnesses now. So, so when, uh, Brother Dennis, when you, when you got into, uh, the cadet, what was it called again? The Explorer, Explorer program? program. Oh yeah. Explorer program. When you I graduated the Academy December 7th, uh, December 7th, 1987. That's way back in the day. 
That's awesome. So who's Our initial? Kids weren't even born uh, yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's good. Oh, our, our kids weren't born. Yeah, yeah. We heard the yeah. of that. So, so who 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 pushed you or who steered you in that direction? Was it was it something that you did because you were starting to get in trouble? Was it something you did because you I watched really, Adam Twelve on TV? I loved Adam Twelve. What was the initial step? I loved Adam Twelve. I always liked cops, but I was not a good student because I was dyslexic, and they didn't find that out. I could have gone either way. Really good advisor talk about the explorer program and it just and it just it sunk in and i'd like to do it because it's like where else can i be i mean i learned to do bicycle licensing write reports you know and back back us we got to work in the front desk and and listen you you officers know this when you're writing a report you bring it to the watch window and they break out the red pen right and i'm like you know i'm only a kid i'm 15 you know I'm like i'm a volunteer i don't get paid for this it doesn't matter you know i got, I got treated that you know, I, I, I learned a lot and I am so grateful. It's still one of the greatest things. But the lessons I learned, you know, about responsibility and how to do things the right way, you know, was awesome. And so that's what, kind of, you know, and being around it and getting to go through the academy was kind of fun. And the drilling and we would do situation simulations. But yet, I mean, I, I got respect there. I wasn't treated like a teenager, you know. I, I love that. You mentioned one thing these kids probably have no knowledge about. A bicycle license. Can you tell them? <laughs> what? I don't even have a knowledge of that. So Easy, Marta. Easy. No, I don't. A bicycle. I know a bike, a motorcycle, but not a bicycle no, 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 no. license. You had to have a bike license. And the Explorer's job was every Saturday, I think, from 9 to 12 or 9 to 1. You'd come in. I think it would cost $3. We wrote down the serial number, filled out the paperwork, and put a little blue sticker on there, and you had to have your bike license. That's, that's, that's going back a long time. But those are some of the things that we did as you know, community service. And we did neighborhood watch meetings with the officers. And I, my favorite thing was I used to call and get the engravers back from people that wouldn't you know, return them. Any of the slows out there that would remember that. You know, because they, they used to give them out and we'd have to call, this is Explorer Sergeant Broad, can you please return our engraver? <laughs> what what did the uniforms look like back in the day? They're uh, powder blue tops. Yeah, and blue, powder, uh, powder, powder blue. Same thing. I mean, pretty same thing except it said Explore instead of Cadet. You know, that's that was the thing, and the age was fourteen to twenty-one. Oh, wow. oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. I, wow. No, I went to Hawaii twice with for summer trips, and we would go to Explore conventions, and you know, times have changed and things they do and don't do anymore. It was just like the best learning experience. I, so I don't know if you can see on your screen or not, but Officer Piamonte, she's currently in charge with our junior cadets. Oh, I uh, would, it's awesome. She, she's, also, she's also the one that uh, got me to watch in uh, TMZ. Uh, we used to work together. We used to be partnered up and she told me about TMZ one time and how she watched it every day And I was like, what is that TMZ? Explain it to me and and I got hooked on it because of because of her. So uh, So it's thank awesome. you officer for your money. Thank you. You know TMZ is a very very interesting thing because it's one of the few news where we just give opinions I mean, we it's two different shows. There's TMZ the half-hour one That's all funny and then there's TMZ live, which is the one I'm on most of the time and that's more where we talk about the news items of the day and the stories that we do. But it's very, it's very interesting because it's the only thing and, and opinions get heated and you do have an opinion and a voice. And one of the really things I really like about TMZ and is that everybody has a voice there, whether it's the janitor or it's Harvey. If someone has an idea, best idea wins. TMZ is a gigantic teamwork like you guys. You know, when you're doing your things, you do them as a team together. That is why TMZ is so success, successful is because every, everyone's idea counts. And if you don't have an idea, some of our biggest stories have come from people not working the assignment desk. The Lamar Odom stuff, you guys, I don't know if you remember when Lamar Odom had the drug issues. That came from a, uh, someone in IT, one of our computer guys, who gave us the tip. So, I mean, everybody has a voice in that, and in that, in that uh, what we call a newsroom, that's that's great we'll, we'll we'll jump into that in a second let me go let's go back a little bit into uh your adolescence you you you're going into high school now 
Uh, are you feeling uh, like uh, you're a, a deputy, a sheriff, a, a, a police was, officer, or I, are you still teetering that line? No, no, I'm, I was, I was a high school. It's in, even now, if I went anywhere, it would be LAPD or nothing. I grew up in LAPD. <laughs> I got family and friends. And listen, I, that's where I was from when I was 14. I always say if I, I don't have a problem, I have some LAPD hats and I don't have a problem wearing it. If someone gave me a Marine hat, I would have an issue wearing it because I wasn't a Marine. But I spent 10 years of my life with the LAPD, so I, I figure I've earned that right to wear that hat. And I don't consider it a poser or a, a traitor. Like, it's, it's an honor to me. Like, like talking to you kids, it's awesome to me. Amen. So when you, when you look at the sheriff's uniform, do you get a little bit uh, disgusted, like queasy in the stomach, like you want to throw well, up? I, I live in sheriff's land, you know, where I live. The sheriffs are the law enforcement. I mean, I like them, but we all know real cops wear blue. Let's just be honest. <laughs> I mean, listen, they're all, all no, law enforcement are brothers and sisters, but everybody wants to be LAPD. Let's just be honest. Amen. Yep. <laughs> and, and in I'll... high school, I, I just told this one story. And I was, I mean, like I said, you just know I had a dinosaur advisor. I got pulled over for speeding. And valley traffic used to be in Van Nuys' area. And I was more scared of telling my advisor that I got pulled over because I would embarrass him. And he's just like, well, you're an idiot. Don't speed again. You know, but it, it was, you know, and luckily I got caught a break, you know, so there is that for you guys. Wow. Wow. So, so you graduate high school, you get through high school, you graduate. Now you got to start making real life decisions. You got to decide what you're going to do with your life. Big steps. What do you, well, what do you do? Where do you go? I did, I did some college and I got a job arresting shoplifters at Ross, right? You guys know that store, Ross Dress for Less? I, there was, I worked at those, I arrested shoplifters. I was playing clothes security, you know, jeans, t-shirt, whatever, stop shoplifters. When I was 20, when I turned 20, I got in a fight with a shoplifter who just got out of county jail. Still had his wristband on for a pair of jeans and gold boxers. I'll never forget this. I, I ripped up my knee. It took three years to get workers' comp surgery. And then you had some very questionable chiefs, and I never took my test. I became a private investigator. So that's where that, really, that's where that took me. And then for five years, I, I had my own business with a partner, and we did locate an asset and hard to do subpoenas. And then when that closed, I needed a job, and I had a cousin who worked in TV. So I fell into TV. I never wanted to be in TV. And I literally just fell into it because I needed a job. And I've kind of just worked my way up there from a guy answering phones to working research to being able to produce a show to, you know, working with Harvey for 18 years on two different shows and, you know, being sometimes on air talent, but digging on stories and in breaking some of the biggest stories in the world in entertainment. Wow. Wow. Super cool. It sounds like you were a little bit like, uh, what is his name? The bounty hunter? A little bit. Uh, about, yeah. <laughs> ser you know, serving subpoenas for that. Yeah, we used to do hard to do subpoenas. Like if you couldn't find them or they were elusive, that's where my my me and my partner would come in. We'd stake it out. We'd run a you know we'd do the investigation, find them, and then you know charge them some nice amount of money and serve them. You know, no service, no fee. Pretty pretty. But pretty sketchy though, pretty hairy situation sometimes, uh, huh? I mean, there, there were there were some times I got some culture shock, you know. I, I look at me, nice little, uh, you know, look at me, and I had to do one around the Coliseum, and I'll never forget this guy yelled out the window to these girls, "Yo, come here, braid my hair for some dope," and I was like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna die because this is not stuff that I was in." But you know, listen, that was the job, and, and I, you know, we'd have to take pictures of cars. And, but yeah, there were some uh, some interesting things to open your eyes about in the world. Absolutely. Kat, were you saying something? A absolutely. Wow. Wow. Incredible. Incredible. I didn't know all that about you. I'm getting to learn more and more. That's pretty cool. Very pretty interesting cool. backgrounds, you know, very interesting yeah. background. Absolutely do. I couldn't even imagine doing half the stuff you did with that. Sometimes when we go out in patrol, you know, it's you, the, the hairs on the back of your neck graze up when a certain call comes over the radio. And, and I, I couldn't imagine doing that without a partner that has a gun, that has a shield, that you know what I mean? And, and you're doing that in, in 
a Toyota Camry <laughs> yeah. with the with yeah, if I could with tell a members only old, jacket. Yeah. If I could tell 18 year old Dennis again, there would be no loss prevention. There would not, you know. <laughs> I mean, I look back at some of the things and some of the arrests I've done and go, wow, I am very lucky. You know, I, I've had friends that had knives and guns pulled on them, and we're talking over clothes. And, you know, and there's been situations like, whoa, I'm lucky to come out of this. But I did get good reports okay. for that. So I can still write a shoplifting report if necessary. <laughs> <laughs> over clothes that's crazy that's Although, crazy listen, to the officers here i have a question so i i've done many shoplifting reports how come every single time every officer had a different change not one was ever the same do you guys just like to change <laughs> things oh you're talking about the uh <laughs> yeah like a, like a citizen's arrest of 484 you know every time someone's like, change this change this change that you make that the next officer would go change this i'm like What's up with you guys in the changes? <laughs> it, it's just uh, yeah. You know, it's just preference. Um, some of us have gone to court and have been ripped a new one by the judge on things that we omitted or didn't. So it happens to us as well. So from experience, at least for me, from what I've been chewed on, I include it now in the report. And maybe others haven't been chewed on or maybe they've just done it this way and it's good for whatever judge is hearing it or DA or watch commander. So I, like I think it's just a kind of preference. Yeah, I never took it personal. I just kind of found it funny. Especially because I knew a lot of the guys that were coming down too, you know. Especially if I was working especially if I was working the Sherman Oak store, I knew a lot of the cops because Banaz was my station. Like, hey dude, I know you're here. Yeah. You know <laughs> Yeah, no, she she's absolutely right about that. Your your report goes with us to court. You know, you you possibly don't make it to court because you got something else going on, but we're going to a court and we got to swear and testify on that report that you wrote. So uh, she, she's yes. absolutely right in that regards. Yeah, I'll, I'll accept that answer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Officer Lee and Piamonte, they don't arrest a lot of people, so they want to give you an answer in regards to that. Um, so, so going to jumping into TV, let's get into that. Your, your first gig into TV, your first uh, experience, my, what was it like? My, my first, I, I needed a job. I got hired to make copies. And then I worked, I worked at a show called National Enquirer TV, and I made copies. I answered phones. I got the boss food. I was what they call a runner. And then a PA, like whatever needed to be done, I did. And then uh, I kind of moved up. And, and as you young men and women start working, man, be a sponge. Be the best you can. I would have down time as a PA. You know, they would go, okay, here's a room you guys sit in. I would be with producers going, what can I do? Teach them something. And with my guy, you know. With my producers, with interns, I have interns that work with me that I'm responsible for. And then I'm like, don't sit around, watch, come sit next to me, listen to me on the phone, watch what I do, learn the lingo, learn how to talk to people. The biggest thing that I tell my interns is how to communicate with people, have a conversation with people, talk to them, don't be afraid, talk to people. That is so important in any job because people would rather text or not look at you. And like the biggest lesson I get is just talk to people, don't be afraid to talk to people. Man, that's a that's a great. We, at the end of this, uh, at the end of this meeting, we ask you for words of wisdom, and that word of wisdom that you just threw out there, that you just gave us, be a sponge, is so valuable. That I hope Joseph is listening. I hope Miguel gets understanding what he's saying. Be a sponge. Try to soak up as much information from whoever it is you can, and okay. use that to your benefit. You can pick up good habits and bad habits, you know? Look at the things that you don't like with people and don't do that. Look at the things that you like from certain bosses. I've had a lot of bosses in my life and some have been outstanding, you know, and some have been really hard to work with. And as I'm a boss now, I take, you know, what I like from them and what I don't like and I try not to incorporate them, you know? And I'm a, a very big rah-rah, I'm a very big team believer. You know, my explorers were a big team. We were always a team together. And my, my desk is a team. We win together or we lose together. You know, that's what you guys should know in thinking. Man, I love that. Absolutely love that. So, so when you got 
as being a PA or an assistant or whatever it is that they called you. I'm sure they called you other things that uh, oh, we yeah. probably can't say here. <laughs> when, when you were being that person or in that role uh, at your job, how did you deal with those hard days when everybody was throwing paper at you and being tough on you and not giving you any type of respect because you're just the bottom of the totem pole? How did you deal with that? Well, I I, I, listen, at the end of the day, I got to eat, right? I mean, and I was responsible because I would, I was moved out at a place. I got to eat. And uh, I don't, I, I didn't have my son until probably the second season of TV. And by then it's, I will do anything for my son. Oh, okay, you want me to go pick up cigarette butts and trash? I got to support my son. and I got to take care of my family. So to me, that's the most important. And I will put my ego aside to take care of my family. That is bottom line. I want to learn and like I don't care you might want to call me nerdy because I was hanging out with everybody learning well guess what I'm going to go further in this world and I don't want to be that guy all my entire career I don't want to take out the trash all my entire career if I have to I will but I want to learn more the more I learn the more valuable I am that's kind of that was my mentality you know jobs aren't always easy to come by so I got a job I'm lucky I'm going to keep it but you know, listen, yeah, you are right. When you're a PA, you are the bottom of the barrel. This, go get that. Hey, that's fine. Whatever you need me to do. I, I got I to gotta take care of myself and my family. That's most important. Man, Brother Dennis, you're dropping gems on us. I'm telling you, you're dropping pearls on us right now. This is amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Yuritza, Yuritza, what does that mean to put your ego aside? This is this is really important, guys. Listen to one of uh, one of our peers talk about this. Yuritsa, explain to me what does it mean to put your ego aside. Uh, it's to uh, keep your um, anger like away from you and then uh, focus on like what's like important. Close, Sophia. Can you answer that question? What does it mean to put your ego aside? Sophia, are you able to answer that? <laughs> I see your eyes roll and she's thinking. Thinking about it. <laughs> you can see her processing. <laughs> I still hear me? You're not sure? Okay. Go ahead, Joseph. I didn't hear you. Go ahead. What do you say again? I said, do you know what it means to put your ego aside? Brother Dennis just said one of the important lessons that he learned is to put his ego aside and make sure he feeds his family because that's his responsibility. What does that mean to put your ego aside? I don't know. It's okay. Was Sophia trying to answer? If, go ahead, Brother Dennis. So it kind of means like, you know, someone too good to take out the trash, or I, I can't do that, that's below me or that. It doesn't matter when you're working, you know, you got a job to do. And officers, when, I'm pretty sure when you guys are boots, you know, you've got some unpleasant job, ugly calls on purpose, they cut a lot of paper, and you know, it's part of this matter, there's a purpose for it, you know? That's what it kind of means. I'm not, and, and I look at even, even today, I'm no better than anybody in my job. You know, we are we are equals. I might be a supervisor, but I'm not going to ask somebody to do something I haven't done, and I've done everything there. You know, and like I said, I just goes back to getting my team to work together. That shows the humility and you guys valuing every job that needs to be done within your area, your office, or whatever you guys call it. And that's an important lesson for these kids to learn. Because every job in a business is important. It's what makes it happen. So they might think, hey, if I start off as a janitor, it's not so important. But trust me, sanitation is important. Oh, yeah. And, and I, just, I just want to find that in, in TMZ's office, there's nobody has office. There's like a couple offices. The lawyers have office and the, and the executive in charge. But Harvey, who is in charge of all 200 of us, he sits out there with us. We have, I got we have, Officer Lear's been to the old office. 
you know, we don't, we have cubicles and everybody can hear everybody and Harvey wants it that way. Because if my desk mate is talking about something and I know about that, I jump in and help him and say, ask this question. Or if I'm interviewing somebody or I'm getting information on a story and my desk mate goes, hey, ask about this, this, and this, because we all work as a team. Because you're right, all the pieces work together. You know, you can't, and as Harvey liked to say, Harvey's really good. He's been doing this 40 something years. Nobody in our work is good enough to do it by themselves. Nobody. You know, we all need help. Harvey will bounce ideas off me. I'll bounce ideas off him. And up and down the ladder, we all bounce ideas off each other. So cool. So cool. So, so let's talk about it a little bit. Let's talk about TMZ. How did you, how did you get fortunate enough to lat latch on to TMZ? And, and uh, what, what has the ride been like? So here, here's what it is. So I went from National Enquirer TV to Fox Sports, you got to see this, back to National Enquirer TV to uh, America's Funniest Videos for a little while. And then Harvey was interviewing for a show called uh, Celebrity Justice. And it's the craziest interview I've ever had. In the middle of the interview, he goes, I've never done this before. I'm going to hire you. I got the job, which was awesome to me, right? Because I had a seven-month-old child and I needed to work. Because National Fire TV, where uh, was it? Where was I? Ripley's was not covering it enough. Oh, and I worked for Ripley's, believe it or not, too, somewhere in there. Wow. So, you, know, you kind of bounce around because shows don't last a lot. They don't always last 20 years. Sometimes they last a season or two. But with Harvey, I worked on Celebrity Justice, and I started in research, and then I moved up to an associate producer where I could produce weekend and hiatus shows, and then when that show went away, we did TMZ. Warner Brothers and AOL wanted to do something with the internet, and at first, Harvey didn't even want to do that. He's like, why would I want to go to the internet? And then when he, when he decided he did, and I'm very grateful, I mean, TMZ changed the way, sorry? Okay. No, that's, that's Joseph and his brother. Go ahead. Wait, TMZ changed the way news was done. You used to publish in cycles. Like you'd put stories up at four and at three and at two and whatever. And then we're like, no, no, no. There's been times where I've called Harvey at three in the morning or two in the morning and, and on holidays and said, there's a story, let's break it. And we do. I mean, now news is it's not uncommon for something to break in the middle of the night and we break it. So, and, and it's, been, it's been very fun. And I've worked on some of the biggest stories in the world. Michael Jackson dying, Prince dying. Um, when we had the bailouts for loans, you, you might be a little young for this, but you know the government was giving banks a billion dollars. But we found out there was this bank that took some of the money and they had like earth, wind and fire. And I forget what other artists playing at a, bank, like, at a banquet. And they're like, no, 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 no. And they ended up giving a billion dollars back to the government. So we've done some really interesting stories, you know, over the time. Absolutely, yeah. The uh, I didn't know that they gave that money back. That's that's interesting. Yeah. You, you did say that. I want to think it's first Northern Trust that did it. I'm not a hundred percent sure because it was like eight nine years ago. But yeah, we've been involved in not always celebrity. I mean, it's still connected to celebrity, but you know, and of lately, you know, with Black Lives Matter, we've been covering some of that stuff. We've been covering social justice. So it's very very interesting where the world is going these days. Yeah. So, so last week you were supposed to be on, you were supposed to be our guest speaker last week. And as a matter of fact, the story broke that, that, uh, that day, that actual hour that you were supposed to come on and you were unable to uh, make it because of that. You, how many of you guys know Jake Paul and his brother, Logan Paul? Any of you guys know him? Awesome. Okay. So there were YouTubers and the FBI raided his house and they were searching for, I, we still can't figure out what they were searching for because the search warrant was sealed. But that we are still trying to figure this out, but it all stems from in Arizona, he was uh, trespassing in a mall where there was looting. And Scottsdale city attorney charged him with trespassing, but they dropped the charges and the federal government came in and we're still trying to figure that one out. But that day we were breaking stories on that left and right. And then, you know, paying attention to details, I just kind of want to, for you guys, I want to say I got a story because everyone's saying the FBI raided him. The FBI took the guns. Well, I looked at a piece of video and there was a sheriff's department officer holding the guns and walking away. And I thought, well, I know cops aren't, you know, PAs and gophers for the, for the FBI. It turned out that the sheriff kept the guns for safekeeping because after they broke down the door, they, they couldn't secure them. So we got a good story off of that because I was paying attention and knowing, you know, by looking. 
So always, guys, keep your, your eyes and your ears open, and you'll see things. Can you walk us through the, the steps uh, of breaking the story? You're at home, you're sitting down at the table, you're eating uh, your dinner, and, and something happens somewhere across the country in New York or, or Florida. And tell, tell us the, the whole uh, the process. Well, we've gotten stories. I mean, listen, we'll get a tip. Uh, and listen, I, I know a lot of people, sometimes I'll get a tip or someone on my desk will get a tip, depending on what it is, we'll call each other. But we've had tips. Uh, Naya Rivera just passed away. And that one came, I get up at 2.30 in the morning. So by 8 o'clock, I'm usually asleep. And I got a call like 8.30, 9 o'clock. And we had to call the Ventura County Sheriff. And we had to talk to them. And we had to verify it. Because, yes, there's all these tips. But until you get it from law enforcement, you know, or, or a representative, you need it to be accurate. Because you can't just put up fake news, you know. You, you can't do that. And so, you know, we got that verified, and uh, then we put up the story. But one, who here knows Kobe Bryant? Oh, okay, good. Kobe Bryant's story. One, I, I can kind of generate that one, because that was on a Sunday morning. Someone got the tip. We got a call from one of our, our bosses. We all started working our sources. And uh, we were, one of our bosses was on the phone with Kobe's people for an hour before we published that story. Because one of the things you can't do is you can't say someone's dead and they're not. And Kobe Bryant, obviously one of the biggest people on the planet, you know, and, and very sad. But, you know, we talked to his people and we got that. Yeah, we know you're going to go with it. Go ahead. You know, and we put up that story. And that's one of those ones that, you know, stops the world, if you will. Everybody knows where they were when Kobe Bryant died. You know? uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you, you talk about the process, about how you, you, you vet the news, you, you go through your sources, you talk to them, you make sure that it's correct because you don't want to put out that fake news, like you said. And it's gotten to the point now that officers, and I've been witness of this for the last maybe seven to 10 years, where officers will say, well, TMZ said this, so it's got to be true, you know? So you guys do a, a, an amazing job in your vetting process to get the actual, actual story. Well, I appreciate that. But like, like I said, you can't, you can't walk something like that back, you know? You can't, that, your whole reputation. You know, you can't say someone's not dead and you can't be wrong. If you're repeatedly wrong, no one's going to trust you and no one's going to go to you. That's why it's so important, these relationships, that, you know, Officer Lear knows that I, he's known me eight, nine years. I always keep my, my word. And when I'm, I talk to them, when I know something's in their world, I give them a heads up. Like, hey, something's coming down your way. Because you can't be that guy that says, hey, can you help me out if I can't help you out? It's a two-way street in life. And remember that. Especially all you kids, and no matter what you're doing in life, it's a two-way street. Don't be the guy that says, gimme, gimme, gimme. You have to, you know, you have to go back and forth. Really nice, really good, <laughs> really good. I, I, I try to tell Officer Piemonte all the time, it's not always about you, Piemonte, it's a two-way street. You gotta give and give a little. So uh, hopefully she's listening to that. I see she, she has her, <laughs> I see she's trying yeah. to curse me. <laughs> <laughs> Officer Piemonte, you have a, you have a question for uh, Brother Dennis? She needs to. Brother Dennis, how do I deal with Officer Lear? Because <laughs> <laughs> I would say take the email, but that's probably not. All these kids are right here. They've been witnesses to <laughs> Officer Lear harassing me, basically. <laughs> I'm telling lies. Yeah. guys are that these officers take their time I can't tell you the life lessons the times I've gotten in trouble because you know we have moms we have dads but sometimes we don't listen to them you know and these officers sometimes will tell you take your head out of your rear you know think about this you guys have this opportunity to talk to them and learn from them and you know they're awesome and you get to see them as a different side than just awesome inside to these guys you know, just, just remember years, years later. 
Yeah. So, so any any celebrities? I know you're on a different uh, side of it. You do. You're more of the research guy. But any celebrities that you've worked with, talked to, I, uh, come across? I have the the one that you will all know. My very when I was working at National Enquirer TV, I was just a PA, and we were going to interview The Rock for his first book, right? And I asked the producer. I said, "Hey, can I come along? I'll carry your clipboard. I will do whatever you want." I just want to go. And she's like, no, 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 you're going to do the interview. I'm like, what do you mean I'm going to do the interview? She's like, you're going to do the interview. And I was like, I'm scared out of my mind. What do you mean? And, and she goes, get your questions. And I got some questions. She helped me write questions. And I was still nervous. And I talked to my camera guy. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm tripping out. And he goes, Dennis, come here. At the end of the day, you're the real person. The Rock is the, is the character. I'm going to go, I have a beer with you than this guy because I know you're real. And, and it just made me think like, wait a minute, I get it. And, and I interviewed The Rock, that was the first I've ever interviewed. I've interviewed wrestlers, I've met tons of celebrities. Kanye West has been in TMZ a couple times, you know, and, and celebrities are people too. Some of them are very, very cool. Others have a little bit of, uh, you know, that ego that you have to check, they don't. One of the nicest guys, and I'm sure you all know, you guys all know Danny Trejo. Uh, probably one of the Great. one of the nicest nicest guys I've, I've ever come across super just a really good guy you know and like I said when a lot of the UFC fighters come in for our TMZ sports outstanding guys just super nice comedians really shockingly how nice some of them are that have been in can you tell the kid the uh, yeah. National Enquirer is because I'm looking at their faces like what what is that so National National Enquirer is a, is a tabloid, you know, like a, like, a, like a, at the checkout stand, they do kind of crazy stories. They had a TV show for two seasons, you know, and uh, it didn't last long. It got canceled. But it's it's with it's traditional tabloid where they might be the they might have some really crazy headlines that have some truth but not everything. And then, but then again, some of the reporting that the National Enquirer did was really good. When they were on the OJ case, they had some really good stories. Brother Dennis, I got a message that uh, one of our kids asked, how do you guys get tips, your, get your tips? Um, we have emails and, and, you know, we have emails and we have a tip line, a phone line that people, you know, will call us. Uh, we get a lot of people with their cell phones. They snap pictures. Neighbors will see police at somebody's house and they'll call us. I know a lot of law enforcement. I know a lot of fire guys. I know a lot of people in general, publicist people in the industry. Uh, restaurants, you know, all these places where celebrities are, they also want, you know, they want their restaurant on TV. So we get uh, just a number of different places. I, I never thought of that. Restaurants want their, their, their place establishment on TV. I never thought of that. Dealers, I mean, everywhere, you know, you'd be surprised where we get tips going, hey, so-and-so is going to be here, you know. They think yeah. it's all cool. And when Officer Lear opens up his little French uh, latte cafe place, he knows who to call now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, so you talked about knowing a lot of wrestlers and a, a lot of uh, MMA fighters. Uh, I don't know if you can see them, but Yuritsa and Miguel are our future, hopefully, uh, MMA uh, mixed martial arts combatants. And uh, hopefully they make it big, whether it's in the pro wrestling world or the actual real fighting world. And uh, when you guys, if you guys do make it big, remember what he says. A lot of the stars become humble. They're really nice people. So remember you met him and hopefully he's still on the air 15 years from now. And he, he'll interview you and make sure you guys are nice to him, okay? Can I ask them a question? Of course you can. All right, you're at Miguel. What are you guys studying in school? In school. Are you guys going to do some college classes? Are you planning on that? Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Man, learn, learn how, to, how to run a business. You know, like just take some basic business classes because I hope you guys make it. And you see some of these MMA guys just have empires upon empires building with the stuff that they do inside the ring and outside the ring, how they market themselves. 
how they invest, you know, and, and you guys got to watch out for yourself because there are people that will take advantage. So be smart and learn the learn for yourself. So, you know, you're in charge of yourself. Don't become a victim. That's just some advice. Just that some I've advice. Seen. That I've seen. Over time, I have seen some of these guys, their managers rip them off because they don't know what's going on and they don't have control. And then I've seen others that are just super smart and have clothing lines and food lines and other things because they're smart about all the fighting too. Man, this is, this is a little bit too much knowledge you're giving us now. Just a little bit too much. You're going to have to tone it down a little bit. The kids are going to think you're smarter than me, you know? <laughs> down not, a little bit. I am not that smart, but these are just things I've seen in my 48 years of life, you know? That I, I've just watched stories. I've seen, I've seen guys that are just super smart. You're like, man, they have three other whole side businesses that are fighting ends. They've got careers on the side. Yeah, it's really amazing how some of those guys do it. You know, you, you mentioned The Rock, but The Rock is just one of, uh, you know, 15 or 20 of those guys that, that take that uh, little bit of spotlight or, or, or fame and, and turn it into, like you said, an empire. It's pretty impressive. And pretty I will, impressive. I will tell you, you know, TMZ has a tour bus, you know, and I'm sure you've seen them on Hollywood Boulevard. And they got The Rock one day. That guy came out and shook everybody's hand and said, hi. I mean, that's a guy that if you make it famous, and I hope you do, don't forget, man, the, the people that get you, that guy always understands his fans. He's never, you know, oh, I don't have time for a picture, an autograph. He's one of those guys that makes sure he's got time for his fans. Very nice. So, so brother, brother Dennis uh, told me that we'd be able to take a tour of the studio. Uh, Show of hands, how many of you guys are interested in taking a, 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 a tour of an actual TV production studio? How, how many of you guys would like to go down? Yeah, I, I, even you, Joseph, I know. Jake raises, raises his hand, too, so. Actually, yeah, we, we would, uh, go, go ahead. Actually, like, OCC was fun because the soccer, um, we lost. <laughs> I I agree with you, Joseph. A hundred percent. I agree with you. <laughs> but yeah, we we would love to come down one day if that's okay yes. with you. As you as open are, up the door to I'd us. I'd love to have you guys down as soon as we are back in the office. Because the last five months I've been working from home, and for the foreseeable future, we'll be there. But at some point, when we're allowed to have people back in, I would love to have the kids come down and the officers. Hey, amen. Amen. We're, we're not going to bring Piemont. It'd be great to come down with all of our kids. It'd be really be awesome. We'll even, make, we'll even bring the captain. We'll bring Captain Larry. Captain Larry's a great guy. Really funny. I'm glad you got to know him. He's a, he's a hilarious, I, hilarious. I was talking to him earlier today about something, you know, like I say, I, you guys, Hollywood Station is a very special place in my heart too, because my old Explorer Advisor's wife was there. She was Otto's a million years ago. And she took me like for three days, I got to hang out with her and got some interesting culture shock, you know? And very, took me some very interesting areas. It was like, it was cool. I was like, wow, man, I, I didn't even know. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Officer Alcaraz, you got anything? I do not, just looking forward to the tour and see if we run into the rock, of course. Is that the one that you like? Because I have a couple officers that said if the rock's ever there, I had better call them and give them the heads up. I, I wouldn't mind just anyone. I'm not really starstruck, but I'm just throwing it in there just because he does seem like a genuine guy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not very starstruck. I've been starstruck twice. Vin Scully, Ooh. I met, and I met George Carlin once. For all you youngins, I was a cool old comedian. And I met the lady that plays Bosch at the, I was at the 150th uh, open house and uh, Amy Aquino, because I love the show Bosch. I thought she was cool. Oh, well you should hang around. They do their tapings here at Hollywood and they're super nice. They greet everyone that passes by. They're really nice. And Titus is there. He's pretty good. I, I, I've been a Titus fan for many years. But again, yes. I, to me, talking to you guys is better than meeting any Explorer. I guess they just spend time with you guys where I see what your future is going to be like being in these programs. It's just, it's more awesome than meeting a celebrity. For me. That's super cute. That's adorable. See you kids. <laughs> like you guys are the future, you know, and these programs will help you stay out of trouble. Hopefully. 
Yeah, boys and girls, he, he gave us a lot of, lot of strong advice, a lot of uh, things that you can take with you uh, going forward in your, in your careers, in your, in your schools, in your, in your lives in general. Hopefully some of this is going gonna, is gonna to click. Some of what he said is going to click uh, uh, later on today or in the future. So it's really, really impressive what you did today, Dennis. Of the Dennisization and fellow officers, I really want to thank you for coming on today. Oh, so we, we try to get you. Go ahead. Go ahead. This, this is my honor to do. This is an honor and a privilege to talk to you guys anytime. And anybody who has any questions, Officer Lear knows how to get a hold of me, whatever I can do to help you guys. It's just like it is an honor and a privilege, and especially someone who's been with one of the programs and see how it affected my life. I can never not help you guys. You know, it's, it's somewhere in my heart that helps you guys. So cool. So cool. So we try to get all our guests out of here in an hour. We know you're a busy man. A story could be breaking any time. Uh, Officer Alcaraz's husband might be upset that she's talking about The Rock on, on uh, Zoom chat. So, you know, anything could be breaking at any moment during the day. Uh, but we want to get you out of here with some words of wisdom. We call them the wow, the wow moment, words of wisdom. So you've given us so many throughout this hour. If you got one more, two more words of wisdom that helped you through your uh, childhood, through, through, through your adulthood, uh, please share that with our kids and to help them uh, going forward from here. You know, try to try to be a good person. That's all. In, in life, I try to be a good person. I try to put more good in the world than I put out bad. That that's my best advice. Be decent. You don't have to be great. Just be a decent person, and life will be will be good. You know, that's that's the biggest advice I can be. Help people when you can. You know, that's if you can help someone, help them. That's, that's the, the biggest thing, and I will go back to the one that I stress to everyone. Learn how to talk to people. Learn how to talk and listen to people. That is the one that will carry you and set you apart from a lot of people. So, so boys and girls, you're getting that from a big time TV producer that works on TMZ. Be humble, learn how to talk to people, and uh, be kind to one another. Uh, not borrowing that from Ellen, but uh, in essence, that's what he's saying. So I've been so, saying it longer than Ellen has a TV show, okay? I've been saying it longer. <laughs> <laughs> Let it be known. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so, so with that, we, we, we say goodbye. Big salute to you, brother, and uh, look forward to seeing you and talking to you soon. Definitely, anytime, guys. And if there's any questions, please, Officer Oscar Lear, Officer Lear, you want to know something he knows how to get a hold of me anytime you guys need anything thank you brother you're the best take care guys be safe bye 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 bye, bye. bye. bye thank you you're welcome bye. take care guys i'll see you guys later be safe.